But what, what I will uh, tell about is that, that, yeah, indeed, there is a, a visible pattern, but also here there is an invisible pattern, invisible complicated processes, and which actually, if, if I would have uh, glasses and can see somehow, maybe even more beautiful. It's kind of way how physics actually not simplify and kill uh, art, but actually bring more. And uh, if you look uh, like real great poets like Pushkin, so it looks like they saw that there is something else. It's a fluid around. So what I will talk about, it's invisible pattern of air. It's uh, air which is uh, not uniformly heated by um, uh, moving um, uh, uh, heat and wind and create indeed a complicated invisible pattern of what we call a refractive index change. So it's a small change of density of air which caused uh, variation of uh, uh, optical light propagation. So and because of this variation, uh, pattern what we don't see here is uh, uh, it's a layers of uh, tubulence. This is a kind of interpretation. Oop. And so there are, there are a lot of processes which we cannot see, but uh, these processes uh, dramatically impact uh, like uh, light propagation or laser beam propagation through atmospheric turbulence. And this is one example. So we see here, like I visualize uh, like uh, some bubbles or edges of uh, pockets of air with different, slightly different temperature, which uh, change direction of propagation of uh, rays. As a result, we have a, distortion, a distorted image here. And we can see, actually, by eye in a hot day, if you look along uh, uh, highway. So it's all this modulation uh, of uh, and the distortion of image. So uh, let's look uh, more careful what is going on, let's say, when laser beam propagates. So when laser beam propagates through atmosphere and hits these pockets of uh, random pockets of air with diff slightly different temperature, so it caused a variation of intensity of light in front, let's say, of lens. And also it co uh, uh, creates dancing of focal spot, and I try to show a movie. This is what we will see in uh, uh, front of lens. When you see actually clear that there is a wind here because all this in, in homogeneity of intensity, they are moving. And in focal plane, we see dancing and distortion of uh, focal spot. So, and this is a very important uh, phenomenon, and uh, we need somehow or mitigate or actually use that for our advantage. And if we look what is going on, let me stop that. Oh, it's difficult. Uh, if you consider propagation and see what is going on in this, this plane, we will see how uh, uniform intensity at very beginning when uh, uh, laser beam left uh, transmitter a changing, and the result we have a, 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 a we call sensation. It's a non-uniform intensity, but also changing uh, uh, what we call phase or wavefront of uh, laser beam. So, uh, and there is a transition from uh, from uh, relatively um, simple patterns to rather complicated topological patterns. What uh, mathematicians are actually. So, what kind of applications? Uh, because funding uh, we have mostly from military, and uh, I, I will focus on military applications. Uh, and you see here, it's a laser communication, and laser communication uh, and between aircrafts, ground station aircraft, or between uh, like uh, soldier and uh, uh, UAVs or tank or whatever vehicle. So, but certainly there are a lot of. Uh, uh, civilian applications. What, how we can address this turbulence problem? 
So one way is try to mitigate. And the mitigation of turbulence using adaptive optics techniques. So it's a mirror which changing shape in order to accommodate and cancel uh, distortions introduced by atmosphere known for probably like uh, 40, 50 years and very uh, efficiently used mostly in astronomy. I show you a picture of a uh, telescope on Maui. It's uh, on the uh, Mount of Haleakala. It's a nice 3.6 meter telescope and show you what can be done to mitigate problem. Problem is atmospheric turbulence. This is a successful mitigation of turbulence when telescope is looking up. And you see that using adaptive optics, you can resolve uh, two stars. So without uh, uh, ad adaptive optics, you just see this bubble. I show you a couple movies. One movie uh, we took a couple years ago, again, we uh, pick up some star, and it was a, uh, close to 90 degree elevation. And you see in the middle of movie how quality of star image will change using adaptive optics. So this is a system is off and, and now it's on. It's a perfect, nice uh, compensation of atmospheric turbulence at mitigation. But if you point telescope at low elevation and we pick up the same star but later on or earlier and do exactly the same experiment. So you see that in the middle we turn on adaptive optics and nothing is working. So what we should say? We should say great, we have a problem and try to solve it. So and this situation when we are looking uh, uh, at a low elevation uh, angle, we call deep turbulence conditions. So deep, I don't know why deep, because it's uh, astronomy, but not uh, navy, but nevertheless, uh, uh, term uh, deep turbulence kind of now uh, very widely used. So uh, one way to solve problem actually to move up, and this is a chart I took from a colleague of mine in Russia, and he was trying for many years, several years, to solve government, I think it's a great uh, project. So start from uh, atomic uh, station, uh, have a balloon at elevation 20 kilometers, so, so be above atmospheric turbulence, send whatever powerful laser beam you can to balloon and retranslate over 700 or actually up to 1,000 kilometers to other balloon and then deliver to uh, user. So, so this is a great way to be above atmospheric turbulence and solve problem. So, but he was successful uh, selling this problem and one, one of the reasons, and actually I pointed that, that picture is wrong. If, for example, he will put here ballistic missiles instead of uh, users, energy users, and it's area protection, so probably he would be more successful. So, but at the same time, this is a kind of give us idea that, uh, like, ideas about using laser for different application, transfer energy, transfer it can be laser communication, secure. It's a, uh, this is a green laser from Haleakala. And I show you actually what is going on with, uh, with laser beam. It's a three different wavelengths. So this is what we see here sitting in the Kuderum in telescope. So you see boiling, uh, boiling light and uh, flushing. And uh, so how to mitigate or compensate this type of uh, distortions, they are so, so dramatic. And this is a white light when we use a, also a very powerful lamp to uh, shine a uh, light between two islands. So question is, is there any real hope for deep turbulence effect mitigation or exploitation? And I give you two examples. One is 
uh, related with directed energy or laser weapon systems. So let's say that we have a target, like let's whatever ceramic or uh, uh, metal sheet of metal, and there is an atmospheric turbulence between, and we should laser beam. So if we do the following, if every time when we have a, a scattering light back, and if we repeat intensity pattern and conjugate phase pattern and send light back and do this several times, uh, suddenly we will find that there is, uh, we can actually receive here uh, intensity or like concentration of laser beam much higher when in the case when there is no turbulence at all and we free space. So what does it mean? That atmospheric turbulence, if it's a deep turbulence, distributed along the propagation path, and if we have a rough surface of target, can bring us up to five times increase of uh, intensity when, uh, in the free space. And the second example I show you is uh, uh, what we call like a region fusion technique. So when we see it, the same picture i shown already, when we see through atmospheric turbulence some pattern because of distortion, and distortion is random, each frame which we record, if we record uh, quickly frames, uh, will have a, a regions which are better quality than other regions. And some regions are actually uh, have superior quality when without any turbulence. So if you use smart technique to uh, fuse all these like regions, we can have an image quality which is better when uh, we watch the same uh, scene or the same pattern uh, in free space without any turbulence. And I show you example. So this is a, so uh, again, the same question. So is there any real hope for deep turbulence effect understanding, mitigation, and exploration? And I would say yes, because recently we received uh, uh, Air Force uh, Murray grant, and UD is lead. Uh, 7.5 million dollars on the wave optics of deep turbulence, uh, uh, wave optics of deep atmospheric turbulence from understanding physics towards predictive modeling, mitigation, and exploitation. So, thank you.